I'm just going to prove 12.1. And basically, we have U in R is an open subset. And we have F, which is a graph from U to R and minus K. And it's like a C1 mapping, which means that all the partial derivatives are continuous. Uh, all right. And we have the manifold M, which is defined <coughs> uh, M is a manifold, which is defined by the constraint that f of c is equal to zero. Uh, and we're going to prove that if, if d f of c oops, is onto uh, for this u, oh, sorry, for actually like c, which is a point here, uh, for c belonging to the manifold m, manifold m, uh, then we know that the, ten the tangent space TCM um, is, the is the same as the kernel of the FC. Okay, and that took too much space. So that's what we were trying to prove. Um, okay, and we're proving this in two parts. We are basically saying, because we want to prove that the tangent space is going to be in the kernel, we are faced is the same as the kernel. We are basically going to prove it this way. Uh, first showing that the kernel of DFC belongs to the, to the tangent space M at the point C. Um, all right. And we are also going to prove this way, showing that TCM uh, is in the kernel of G F C. All right. So first we have a, like a preparation in which we define C um, in like in the in F is equals to A and B, where A uh, is our passive variables and B our active variables. All right. And then we say that, let's see, D, oops, D, F, C is going to be a matrix, of course, A and B. And when we row reduce this matrix, this is going to be like uh, referring to our passive variables and these are active variables. Uh, and we know that this is N. So this is going to be n minus k because it's onto, and this is going to be k, um, and this is going to be n minus k <coughs> because our graph is like from n to n minus k, and as this is like our input and this is like output. So anyways, n and n minus k. All right. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. And then we have that the image, uh, the dimension of the image of the f. C um, is n minus k because this is onto and this is referring to the, the number of columns of A. And okay, and then by let's say, oh yeah, of course. And if the dimension of the image is n minus k, then of course the dimension of the kernel of the F C is going to be equal to k because of like the no ring canality theorem or something. This must be like this. Um, all right. So now, okay, now I'm going to, to, to prove the first part. And this is just like the preparation for both these parts. I feel I should erase this because I'm going to need this, but well. All right. So I can choose of increments x and y dot that belongs to the kernel of df well and they are increments because they belong like to df which is like the derivative uh, and then I can have if this if we apply the previous matrix that we had which was the matrix of df oops 
to this here, we are going to get that A, this plus B, Y is going to be zero because it's in the kernel. So, oops. So, so we're having zero. Uh, all right. And this means that X naught, okay, let's do everything. Like this is going to be, let's say, minus B, Y, A, X. Okay, and then we apply A minus one to both sides. So we're going to get that X is going to be the negative of the inverse of A and then B and Y. Okay, so that's very good. Um, because we can also say that this, well, this is because of the implicit, oh, we need to go up. Okay, so <laughs> this is X equals to negative of the inverse of A, B applied to Y. And because of the implicit function theorem, we know that we can write this as d g of b applied to y. This is just implicit function theorem, all right? So x is equal to this. And like so, by definition, like since this is d g of b applied to y, uh, this means that this is the graph of B, G of B, since like those is the, are increments, like any increment that we want, and then this is going to be the graph of B, G of B, uh, which by definition is in the tangent space of M, at this point C that we defined. Uh, all right, so we just proved that the kernel of DFC, since we chose a point increments that were in the kernel, that the kernel of DFC is also in the, in the tangent space of M. Okay, so this part's left. Um, all right. Okay. Second part. Uh, so. Okay, so we proved that this, now we want to prove that uh, the tangent space of M and point C is also in the kernel of DFC. And what it just had was that of, let's say, X, I chose, okay, I think it's cool, okay. Um, X was B, G of B applied to Y. And then just like doing all, everything but in reverse, we can say that this is negative A inverse B applied to y uh, and then we can like go back to our matrix and do the opposite so we can know that we can say that this plus this times a plus y times b is going to be zero yay we are doing just the reverse of what we did before um and so Oh, actually, I should like first define that this is df of c applied to x naught y. Damn it! Because this was just the matrix A and B, and so this is going to be zero. And we started here, and this we had proved like this is in the tangent space TCM. And this is within zero. So this is basically telling me that TCM is in the kernel of DFC because I'm applying DFC to this increment which is the <coughs> space and I'm getting zero. So it's in the kernel of DFC. And I have proved two points. So I have proved that like the tangent space is the same as the kernel of DFC.